Hello all YouTubers, I am Dweller Dude. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you for tuning back into this tropical discussion for September 10th, 2020. Before I get on with today's video, however, if you guys want to stay up to date with the latest forecast and best forecast from Dweller Dude, then please, every single one of you that is not subscribed, please click the subscribe and the ring and the notification bell so you guys stay up to date with the latest Dweller Dude content. And also, please watch the whole video. Thank you guys so much, by the way, for a thousand subscribers. It really does mean a lot to me. And this is taking the next step towards monetization. So please watch the whole video. It really does help out my channel a lot. And also, please give this video a like and share this with your friends. Thank you. Now let's get on with today's video. If you guys haven't seen my earlier video or my community post, you may know that I've officially become monetized and... I want to thank you guys really so much because, um, like, like I said before, my channel has had a lot of ups and downs, but thankfully there's been a lot of ups more than there were downs, and thank you guys so much for get, for me, for helping me get to this goal, and let's let's keep going on this journey because I'm having a lot of fun here, and I'm giving you, I'm, I'm having a great time giving you guys great weather content, so hopefully I'll keep bringing you guys some great weather content, and we have another great weather video for today which is tracking some tropical waves. Yes, even more tropical waves off the coast of Africa and some potential tropical storms, some potential tropical cyclones, whatever you want to call it. So here come the tropical waves. We have one here sitting off the coast of Africa, and this one we've been identifying for a while, but keep an eye on it. Has a 90% chance to develop here, this tropical wave by the National Hurricane Center. Um, it's a few The tropical wave is a few hundred miles southeast of the Cabo Verde Islands. So we just had a storm, I think it was Renee, that hit the Cabo Verde Islands, so hopefully they're recovering. Um, we could see some gradual development of the system. We could see a tropical storm expected to form by this weekend or early next week before we see the storm move westward across the eastern and eventually the central Atlantic. But notice the two-day development chance was 60%, which is still pretty good, but the five-day chance is 90%, which is a lot better. Then, besides Renee, Paulette, and all the other storms going on around here, we have another system. Now, as you can see, this system has no X, meaning there's really no disturbance center, there's no storm center, for all I know, the storm is probably back over in Central Africa. But when it's just a box here and no X, like the other one had, that means that a wave is over here and it's forecast to become off of Africa. And eventually there will be an X there. But for now, it's just a, um, an orange zone right over the Cabo Verde Islands here with a 40% chance to develop. And let's take a look at this one here. Let me move this over. So as of the 2 o'clock update, we have another tropical wave is forecast. I guess they'd forecast to merge off the western coast of Africa this weekend. Environmental, environmental conditions are going to be conducive for development. We can see a depression or a storm over the eastern Atlantic early next week while the storm moves westward. But notice, notice the two-day chance for development is zero, though. So if this is going to develop, it's going to be over three, four, or five days with a 40% chance. Kind of like this system I talked about in my last video here that's over the Bahamas also has a 40% chance. Quick update on Paulette here, 50 mile per hour winds, 998 millibars of pressure. While Renee has the same amount of winds, but the pressure is a little bit higher. Um, so it may not look quite as impressive on satellite as Paulette does. Now, looking at the satellite imagery here, um, as you can see, there's Paulette battling some dry air. There's Renee. And then we have our tropical waves. One is right here, getting a lot of spin here. Then this could be potentially our next system that could come out over the Cabo Verde Islands. This could be another system that the National Hurricane Center hasn't even identified yet. So that could be even yet another system on top of all the ones we're having right now. Here's a good spin up there. You can see this right over by Europe. It's like it's taking Paulette's moisture and it's stringing it into another loop, into another low. Okay, that looks pretty impressive. Anyway, we have a lot of tropical waves here, a lot of potential tropical cyclones, a lot of potential tropical storms that could develop. And a few of these have been coming off of Africa lately. We've been seeing them a lot. Okay, that's how Paulette developed, developed from Africa. Same with Renee. Same with these other systems here. They're all developing... Um, because of these waves coming off of Africa and developing over the eastern tropical Atlantic. So these are your tropical storms that you've been seeing. Tropical storm for August of 2020, tropical storms for September of 2020. Uh, we've been seeing them come through a lot lately. So this is, this is like kind of like last year where we're seeing the hurricane activity ramp up. And I'll have you guys know a little fun fact. Today is actually the most active hurricane season day. Just climatologically. Does, does this mean September 10th is always the most active day? No. But September 10th, climatologically, is when we actually reach that exact peak for tropical development. But overall, it's really that August to early October time frame where we see the most activity. But just a little pinpoint fun fact, today is the most active day. And we're not lying, right? We had six, to, we had seven, but now it's six 
tropical disturbances slash tropical storms all at once. So this is pretty impressive. So looking at the sea surface temperature anomalies for the Cabo Verde Islands, it's a little bit above average actually, but just south of there where our current our system is with a 90% chance of development. I don't believe it, it is an invest yet, I don't think. Um, staying right here, staying in some little bit cooler waters, but that will be moving into some warmer waters eventually going on down the road. Our, our sea surface temperatures here, our actual sea surface temperatures, again, where the water is a little bit above average or a little bit below average, either way, our waters are in the 80s, which is all that matters for these storms to develop. And you see we'll be tracking towards waters that may be close to the mid, even upper 80s. So, wow, what a change, huh? So, looking at the GFS model here, again, don't be alarmed. That's just Paulette there. There's Renee there. But we're focusing on some other systems as well, and let's focus on them. So, here comes our first system. Now, th this converges one huge tropical wave and break off. Here's our first system right here. Here's the one that develops behind that, moves over the Cabo Verde Islands. I like to look at on the Cyclone Vorticity signature because personally, I feel like it's a lot easier to see. Um, you can you can track the storm a lot better. And look at this, GFS model, boom. This could smash right into Martinique here, potentially in uh, 8 a.m. Wednesday. And we can even have another system here, maybe a little area of tropical moisture coming off of Africa yet again. All right, but that'll be further on down the road. And look at this, Haiti and Dominican Republic, could get smashed here exactly two days after the storm just hit Martinique. At 8 a.m. Friday, it will be heading right towards Haiti and Dominican Republic. Potentially. I don't want to alarm anybody. This is a potential. All right. And maybe even southern areas like Trinidad and Tobago could watch for some big wave activity. If this one tropical wave here, the first one, the one that has a 90% chance of development by the National Hurricane Center. I'm talking about this one right here. This could be heading in your direction. Anywhere from Trinidad, even the, um, the Leeward and Windward Islands. And eventually hitting Dominican Republic potentially down the road. So let's take a look at those wind speeds, that surface pressure. What do we feel like it could be here? How strong could these winds get? Now, with the first system, we could see some tropical storm conditions developing, maybe even hurricane conditions. I'll be showing you that. Then our other system, it's going to be tangling with a high pressure of like a very tiny surface. Like the surface high is at, if it's at 10, 15 millibars of pressure, like look at this. There's a high pressure with 1,015 millibars of pressure, but then there's a low with 1,014. There's actually some low pressures with 1,017 millibars of pressure, so that's that's not even a weak, that high shouldn't even really be there because that's that's weak that's weaker than a high. When you got 1,022 millibars of pressure, that's your real high pressure. But then you have a low pressure with 1,020 millibars. So what? That's, <laughs> this is pretty crazy. But then you have Paulette with 963 millibars of pressure. So basically, the tropics are alive. Okay, and they have been over the past couple of weeks, past week or two. All right. Then it's very tiny, but you can see some near, if not actual, hurricane force winds slamming right into Martinique here, right through the central part of the islands here, in the easternmost part of the Caribbean, as we head through the day on Wednesday, next Wednesday. So, tropics are getting pretty active here. Now, in terms of the steering patterns, how about them steering patterns? Okay, because this is going to determine where these storms could go. So, here is your little high pressure kind of developing right here, kind of like that Bermuda high almost. That's going to steer Paulette this way, but it's also going to be steering that little system here, whatever becomes of this, maybe Sally, steering in this direction this way. So a lot of possibilities here, all right? And then that high could grow even more, get even stronger, send right, right about there, and continue to push storms, keep them south, keep them from going out to sea like Paulette and Reen could, and kind of pushing them farther south and maybe steering them towards the Caribbean islands, Bahamas, even the U.S. down the road. So, stay on alert. Anyone in the Caribbean, even the Cabo Verde Islands too, you guys. But the Caribbean, the Bahamas, the United States, all those places. All right, definitely have to stay on alert here because the tropics are getting hyperactive. I mean, we just, it's, it's like, it's almost becoming common now to see tropical storms coming off the coast of Africa. We've been seeing it trying to develop. So, here is the Jab model. Now, they say something very different. They say a lot of convection is going to develop, but maybe some shear could come and completely just shear off. The shear will kind of, tear these storms apart, um, maybe not completely, but we're going to kind of see the steering flow kind of direct them more towards the north, kind of gently move them in that direction. Then maybe in about eight or nine days, maybe another storm develops. So we're seeing a lot more tropical waves, a lot more potential tropical storms on our hands here. Again, taking another look at the satellite, you can see there's our first system here. We got another system emerging off of Africa eventually that could emerge off overnight with some very powerful convection here. So. That could, have a, that could jumpstart the storm's development, potentially. Now, in terms of them wind speeds, how about those wind speeds? 
uh, with these storms. Potentially, maybe briefly getting towards tropical storm status. You see there's a little patch of green up here. It might not even be related to the low. But we are seeing some tropical storm conditions potentially. But definitely something like Paulette, for example. Definitely looks like almost a hurricane. If not, it definitely a hurricane. Um, but once these storms become invests, that's going to be it become a lot easier for, like I said in the last video, it's going to become a lot easier for me to track these storms once they are de deemed invest, if they are. So look at Paulette here. Pretty interesting. The storm is surrounded by a high pressure all around. Going to kind of keep it moving very slow. And then once the high backs away, as you'll see right here, then once the high kind of tapers off, moves this way, so will Paulette. will be shooting up north and east and out to sea and out of our harm's way. Now, how about the cyclone vorticity signature? As you can see, it's as far east as this map goes. And you can see some activity kind of brewing there off the coast of Africa. But this looks like an updated version from last video. You got two storms there, again, that are sitting near the Bahamas and one in the Gulf here. Looking at the dry air map, as you can see, wow. We got a lot of no dry air. I mean, we the dry air has been sticking around for a long time, and it's just now starting to taper off. Um, these storms have managed to work their way around the dry air, which is good for them, not good for us. We got our first tropical batch here. We got another tropical batch brewing back there, closer to Africa. And when we look at the wind shear, <laughs> it's some. The storm, it's gonna. There's a narrow little window there of some shear that's less than 10 knots. But it may, these storms may have to go through some shear, 30, 40 knots. If they want to redeem themselves and you know declare themselves, yes, I am worthy of becoming a hurricane. They're gonna have to battle a lot of shear, 40 knots plus. So and wind shear, there actually hasn't been much change. I'll, as you can see, all these black lines and all these zeros, that means wind shear hasn't really changed too much over the past 24 hours. Now, where do storms usually trek through September? We usually see a lot of storms about back here, and then they track whether it's to the Bahamas, to the Caribbean, to the Bay of Campeche, into the northeastern Gulf, up the east coast near Bermuda. All these are possibilities, as you can see by the prevailing tracks map. So this is going to be very interesting. Right? A lot of tropical waves, and these could develop. So stay on alert. Cabo Verde Islands, Caribbean, even the U.S. and Bahamas down the road. Stay on alert here because we could see some tropical trouble potentially brewing here. So some potential tropical cyclones that we have to watch out for. So thank you guys for watching today's video. I am Dweather Dude signing off. Till next time, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Please don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.